Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are going to talk about one app that will help you scale any activity, any creative activity you're doing, any project management you're doing. You've maybe heard of it before, you maybe saw the logo in the thumbnail, but we're talking about the app called Notion. Just before we begin, again, my name is David. I am so glad you're here today. If you hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, I would appreciate that a lot. Even if you just hit the like button, it lets me know that you're getting value from this video and I can create more content like this. All right, so let's begin. In this video, I'm really gonna cover what's been so valuable for me and my team using Notion, my processes using Notion, and we're gonna really cover databases. So if you have some experience with Notion, you'll know what that looks like. But this is literally how we manage video content, written content, freelance work structures. So if I have a freelancer working with me, all their projects get put into Notion and most importantly, client projects. So we currently are managing about 20K worth of projects a month on Notion with ease. It's amazing, it's amazing. And we built the system so it works the way we want. Now in this video, I'm gonna do an amazing job of just covering the highlights and the top level things. But there's gonna be another video where I'm gonna cover the exact steps from start to finish of setting up our project management database, which is gonna be our, our most robust database. So if you came to this video because you're looking into Notion for the first time, you've never used it before, let's go to their website and just take a look at a little bit of the information that they provide on their website. So this is their about page, a story of tools and the future of work. So they go through this process, they have these cool characters of explaining why they built Notion in the first place. So let's take a look. This is the key right here. Let's take a look here. That's where Notion comes in. We want to break away from today's tools and bring back some of the ideas of those early pioneers. As a first step, we are blending much of the workflow into an all-in-one workspace. This is really important. That is probably the best way to define Notion. There are so many things you can do in Notion and they give you a structure that is very clean, very systematized and very customizable so that you can make it specifically what you want. Want a task list, a product roadmap, a design repository? They could all be in one place. You could even customize your own workspace from dozens of Lego style building blocks. The reason this is so important, especially if you're new to Notion, if you know Notion, you already get this, but it's like having all your Word documents in one platform at the same time for easy access and then you could easily link them to each other. So it almost works as if it was a website. It's a beautiful system. And we're gonna take a look at it right now a little bit further. Next things I just wanna just highlight are two major downfalls. They include both of these, but we don't use them at all. Like we use them this much. We literally use them this much. Major like things that don't work within the app where you could use other tools would be communication. Communication in the app is a hot mess. So like things like this will happen where the developer here is messaging me and then I message him back. This is just in the page. So if you don't have a full sense of how Notion works, this is a little bit random, but we're like just in the page right now. And to have just text in like this is a little weird. Yes, you can do this and like, you can do like a comment and then leave a comment on something, but then it gets hidden. And then there are comments where you could leave like comments at the top of a page, but it just gets to be a really hot mess. Cause you'll see here, it's like, it's really hard to tell what is what. So communication, just stay on Slack, it's way easier. Keeping files in the app is really difficult. If I'm missing something, someone at Notion or whoever watches this video, please let me know. But literally if I upload say like, I create this video, I have the audio, I have everything and I upload it to Notion. For another person to use it, they literally have to download it to their device, then they could use it and then they have to re-upload the new edits or whatever. In Dropbox, the one file always stays the one file. So if 20 people open the, that one file on 20 separate days and they make an update, it's always gonna stay fresh and current. But with Notion, there's this weird thing where there's not really a place to keep files. Yes, you can drag a file into a page and have it on the page, but to download it or to view it or to access it, you literally have to download it, which is weird. If it's an image, it shows up on the page. Like if it's a Loom video, you'll see here the Loom video just shows up on the page. If it's like a video file that you wanna to give to a video editor, I haven't found a way to make that realistic. So we still use Dropbox. Now back to their website, a few major pluses, right? They have, it's like all your documents and your folders in one system, it's beautiful. But they also have all these different ways to use it. So you could have the app, you could have a desktop app, which I use the desktop app so much. And then also they have this like web clipper for like 
like your Chrome, which is like this little guy right here. But the app is so friendly, so easy to use. And also shortcuts are amazing. They have this forward slash thing that is basically magic. So if you're ever on a page and you just decide, let me click here and you'll see it says type forward slash for command. You type forward slash and it gives you a, like hundreds of options. It feels like just so many options for what you can do and create. And I'm gonna go in this in the other video where I literally show you how to create the database. But with that said, let's take a look at my setup. Now I'm, I'm gonna highlight four major things here. I'm gonna highlight templates. I'm gonna highlight properties. I'm gonna highlight checklist and I'm gonna highlight sharing, okay? So this is the part of project management that I just wanna very much make clear. And then we have this type of system built out for everything, which I'll just touch on briefly as we go along. So let's take a look. So first and foremost, before I show you templates, this is a page on Notion. And so as I'm in here, this is our main database. We use the PAR method, you could just Google P-A-R-A -A by, I'm forgetting the gentleman's name, but if you type in PARA method of organization, you should be able to find it. But Main thing we have is areas of responsibility. Under that we have projects. So here is our current client projects and here are all our video content. It lives here. So let's look at this. This is the database. This is what I'm gonna show you how to make. So you'll see here, this is a client. We have a 50 point checklist package that they picked. You see it's tagged here as well. You can see when the internal due date is, you can see who it's assigned to, you can see where it's at in the process. So this goes all the way to completed. It goes to have it started to completed. So you have the entire setup here. You can sort this however you want. You could organize it how you want. You could have different views here of whatever you want. But the first thing I'm gonna to touch on here is templates. Why this works so well and it's just so beautiful is this is like a mini database where we have templates. So if I click new here or new up here or click this little drop down arrow, you'll see there's these four or five templates, maybe actually six. These templates here are what we use for any new client because they hire us for one of these packages. So let's say they hire us for the 100 point checklist. Well, what ends up happening is we click on this and you'll see what happens. It's gonna start filling out all this information. So first it adds the image, it adds the little icon. This is a custom icon that we uploaded, very easy to do. It adds a few details here, like haven't started yet. So we'll talk about, these are the properties. We'll talk about that next. But here, look at this, it filled in all this information for us. Literally all of this is the template. So we don't have to copy and paste and recreate the template every time. Imagine if you had a Word document that you have to then go like duplicate the Word document. Is it the latest Word document? I don't know. The templates are always the latest version. And so now you have this full page. I'm gonna show you this process one more time so you can kind of see the impact of it. Literally all this content has just been added to this page. So let me go back. I'm gonna delete this page and I'm just gonna hit new. So you see here, there's nothing in here, but then you'll see here, it gives you these options for the template. So as again, this page is just empty. As soon as I click the 100 point checklist, it's gonna fill out a few items up here and then down below here, it's loading. It's gonna add all this information. And so this gives us a very, very powerful way where we don't have to get lost in the projects. And then what ends up happening is once a project's created, we can see it organized in the page here. So you can see already, this is the untitled and it's down here at the bottom. And once we add a due date, it'll organize itself in this field. So now let's get into property. So all of this database, we created a set of like 10 properties for this database, which is gonna look different in a different database. So let me just show you, this sounds so meta. Okay, so let's take a look. These are the properties. Now we create all of these. You can see they all have a little icon, so they all kind of symbolize something. These are dates, this is a check mark, this is a person assigned to a person, this is a status. So these are like predefined, you can only have one here. So you'll see as I change it, it even updates here. And then here, this is a formula. So this formula basically adds seven days to when it was created for when the first part of the project is due. So it just does that automatically and gives us the date. For the, we have two due dates, an internal due date and a client due date. That gives us space within the project process to deliver the project. So here, if I said, we wanna make this due, our next due date will be the 15th of January internally, but for the client, they're gonna actually receive it the 18th of January. So then that is all set to go. We also then could assign it. So I'm gonna assign it to myself here and you'll see, 
And then if there's a project lead that's separate, you'll see that show up there. But basically these properties are the key pieces of information that we got to add and create for each project that helps us know where everything is at. And as you'll see here, actually, let me fill out one more piece of information, type of project, this is 100 point. You'll see here, it adds in all the key details here. And so we chose what properties show up here. So if we click on this little three dots, you'll see properties. And here you could choose whatever shows up. You could organize it however you want. So if I chose like, let's say, uh, jumpstart due date, you'll see it adds a date there. And then if I'm like, nah, actually I wanted to go right there. If I drag it there, you'll see it puts the date over here. And so it's so easy to customize and own it. And if I don't want to get rid of it, you could show up to the first 50 or you could show 10 or all or whatever you like. So if I said 10, it'll show 10 there and then it'll just say load five more. But we like to have them all showing right now. So then I'll come back here to David's new project. Just click on that and be able to delete it. And just like that, it's so easy and the properties are saved. Now, one final note about the properties that is really cool. So when we complete a project, this is a personal system that we use that works really well. But let me say I drag this. We do this for a special reason, which with the sharing, you'll, you'll see why in more detail. But let's say we complete this project. I would drag it to completed projects. And so basically at the very bottom of this page here, you'll see it shows up here. But when I click on it, the properties are gone. And so since the properties are gone, it's like, oh no, did we lose that information? Actually not. So what I can do is I could just send this back. If I hit move, it'll give me all the options and I could go, I could send it back to SEO open projects. I'll click on that. And you'll see if I go back to main headquarters, you will see that it showed up back here and it not only showed up back here, it kept all the data. So I'll show you why this is important than a shared, but this is so valuable, it is so, so valuable because these properties end up operating for us as internal like pieces of information that we need. The client doesn't need to know that there were different due dates. So when we put it into completed projects and then we share it with the client, they don't see any of this. I'm jumping ahead. So point number three, and actually right before point number three, I do want to say this, when you do assign someone to a project, they actually get a notification, which is amazing. And it makes it so simple to manage. So there's this new project. It operates as its own separate page. It has all this information laid out because it was a template. I could go back to our main page and see it just living there. And then when it's done, I can just click it, drag it, drop it in there. I also have this set up with a custom sort so that it sorts in this ascending order so that we see the most due project at the top of the list. Finally, you kind of saw this a little bit, but it's really worth making checklists. So let's go back here. So these are the templates. You could come in here, click edit this template, and then you could hit either hit edit or duplicate. So say you make one template, you could then duplicate it and then go from there. But let me just go to a different template so you could see a, another version of this. But if I go in here and I click edit, you'll see this is a template. If I make one change here, it'll change the template for all future cases of this template when it's used. But I could come in here and you see there's this checkboxes and you're like, so how do you create all these checkboxes? Well, you could come in here and easily just create checkboxes. So I'm gonna show you what, you could create all these different settings. So that's heading one, two, three, then there's a checkbox and then there's a bullet point and then there's a number list and then there's a drop down, which is pretty cool. And then there is like code and then you could create a separate whole page at one of these items and then just change it back to regular text. But I'm just gonna change it here. There's actually 20 other things you could do with this as well. You could create a call out. They have this really cool shortcut where if you do forward slash turn and then start typing it in, whatever you wanna turn it into like a quote, well, it becomes a quote or I'll do turn and then to do list, boom, turn, call out. I love call outs, call outs look great, but it's so easy to change. And then I'll just hit command C to revert and then go back to normal. So checklists are so powerful because if you're doing a client project, you could create a checklist once. When we upload videos to YouTube, we have this process with like any of the, the videos we do. Let me actually go to like a newer one. You'll see here. So this is like the content. I'll talk through these points. I kind of have a script. I kind of don't. So I'll talk through these different points. So point one, point two, point three, point four, right? So these are all the points, but then I have these already created in the template where once the video is created, the editor knows that he can do these things. So he could add text to the screen, the question, he could add my name at the intro, these different things. These help keep our projects consistent. 
So now the editor knows what needs to be put into every video. And if we need to add something, well, we just adjust the template, which you'll see here, we have these different templates for videos. I'll click edit the template, come in here, and then you'll be able to see, well, all these checklists live here. So I'll be able to add the item, new item, copy that. And then I would just paste it into these new blocks here and basically put it all for all of them. Cool, and that's good to go. And the final note here that I just want to talk about with these highlights is sharing. So I don't want to share this whole database with a client, but maybe I want to share a page or I want to share a few things with a client. Well, it's really easy to do that. So first and foremost, here's David's new project that we were working on earlier. I'll click in here and I could literally just share this page. So I could click here and then basically add an email or whatever that may be to the list here. So I can say if your email was hello at crushingit.com. Well, it's a, it shows this little email icon, which means they don't have an account and it'll send an email and you'll click on that. And then you could choose the access, full access, can edit, can comment, can view, whatever that may be. And then you invite them. Perfect. If they do have an account, like let's say David, do this, you'll see it actually shows a little icon of a of the first letter of their name or it would show their image, I believe, if they already have an account, which is just so cool. It makes it so easy to use. So sharing is really helpful. And like we said earlier, like when we deliver it, I'm going to share it with the client. But then afterwards, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag the project in here and then it gets rid of all the properties so that when the client sees it, I mentioned this a bit earlier, but then when the client receives it, they don't receive all those details and all this stuff would be checked off. This would probably be removed. That's like an one item that we just delete. Any of this red stuff wouldn't be here. All this stuff would be checked off and all those details. So if I actually go, let's see. So you see here, there's a huge delivery for a client. This is like all their notes, their details, everything's checked off. Like it's all done and ready to go for the client, which is just awesome. Now, one other thing I wanna highlight is the cool part about a database is that you could then take this, I could talk about this forever. I absolutely love this. You could take this database and link it in other places. So for example, if I go to like, say example, this workspace, you'll see this is the same database. It's just organized differently, specific for how West wants it set up. And so if I go back, you'll see this is the main database. And I always use inline databases, which I talk about in the other video, but later on that, like that's enough for that for, for now. So you can see the video content here. Again, we have these like four or five different templates built out. When I go to the content roadmap, which I, if I click here, there's video content and then there's a written content. This also has, there's a newsletter and then there's like blog article guide template. So that is all here. You can see all the tags here. When I'm working with a team member, uh, let's say for example, the web developer, right now we're not working on a lot of projects, but you'll see here, this is where his projects live and then he has a template. So let's say project name, you'll see there's a project number that I can give it, it just, I set it up manually. You can probably automate it, I don't know. I just have it manually. If there's instructions with a Loom video, I'll link the video there. Status, new and progress complete review due date so he knows when it's due this is so much better than email and this is custom from my software developer which is just so it makes it so powerful what website are you working on and this is cool time allotted so i can clearly communicate to him i've allotted 60 minutes for this or i've allotted 90 minutes he could come back and tell me oh it's gonna take more time but i'll say i've approved 60 minutes if you think you can get it done sooner great if you think it'll take longer let me know and then actual time at the end of the project he can record and then who it's assigned to. And then here are just a few details of the project or code or anything that happens. Again, it gets really hard to do back and forth communication in a project. There's comments here, but I never really, really use that. And finally, I've been showing you so much of our database. We have so much set up here. Let me find one more. So let's do the content. This is really cool. I'm reading a book right now. Let me grab it. It's called Work the System. Respect to the author, I think he's a great guy and I think he did a great job of writing this book. I'm thankful for the book. I think it's it's kind of like, he's not an author. I, I don't wanna be offensive, but he's not an author. So it's kind of like, there's parts where if you're not, if you don't push through, it's hard to get through. Anyway, work the system, the systems that need to be here. So you'll see here that this is like, 
our system for content. So when you get to this page, there's instructions for uploading blog content. When it's done, it gets posted here. There's these different videos of how to upload the content here on this whole process, how to add products and services to the store. So these are the main priorities for this, this person on the team, Elizabeth, who's able to go through these different items and know that she can come in here to her own workspace and see what she needs to do for the day. I absolutely love that. And then from there and uploading to YouTube, it shows a very clear way for her to be able to know how to do it. The instructions are here. And then we add the content in here when it's done. And just if you are curious and you are a Notion fan and you saw this, this is first our areas of responsibility. These are our projects, open, open projects here, open video content. It helps us keep everything visible that needs to be. Bottom is resources and then we have the archive at the, the very bottom. So that is the whole PAR method on our homepage with a lot of great, great content here. So if you have any questions, please let me know down below. If you had any aha moments, please let me know down below in the comments. I would so appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Please hit that like button. And if you enjoyed this content, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell. We will stay up to date soon. There's more content coming out soon. With that said, peace out. See you guys next time.